an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? If you look around the world, there's all of a sudden all this attention on the issue of inclusive growth. So, for example, the European Commission talks about the need for growth to be not only smart, but also inclusive and sustainable. And we, the problem is we don't really have that many frameworks out there that help us understand why it is that, say, the 1990s were plenty smart. There couldn't have been more investments in areas like uh, information technology, biotechnology. But it was also a decade in which, in many advanced industrialized countries, the Gini coefficient, which is one of the measures for inequality, rose very rapidly. And the problem in economics is that you used to have people, whether it was Karl Marx, David Ricardo, or some of the early uh, economists of the 19th century, who, when they thought about areas like mechanization, they immediately then thought about what the distributional impact would be, say, profits over wages. Um, and there was, you know, so the people thinking about innovation were also thinking about distribution and inequality. Instead, what we've seen in the last I'd say almost 100 years, is a separation of these two areas. So you have labor economists thinking about uh, inequality, um, you know, what determines wages, different aspects around skills, and innovation economists and industrial economists thinking about that other side, innovation, industrial markets, um, firm behavior, corporate governance. And the few people who are actually trying to connect these two areas again are, you know, for example, working within a framework called skill bias technological change. And the problem with that approach is there's really no theory of innovation there. Skills are actually not explained. And so even though they're, in theory, bringing together skills and inequality through thinking about how the advent of new technological changes and, in some ways, revolutions leave behind many of the unskilled, um, the theory of innovation is not there within that approach. So the challenge for innovation thinkers um, working within the Schumpeterian paradigm is to really apply what we know about innovation, the fact that it's very collective, the fact that it's path-dependent, persistent, it's not a Gaussian random walk, a Gaussian process that could be defined as a random walk, um, and the fact that it is um, deeply uncertain, it's not just risk, it's deeply uncertain, these different characteristics should be part of the way that we then reflect on the ways that it has co-evolved, in some cases, with inequality. And this is uh, related to some work I'm doing now with um, Bill Azonik, where we consider, for example, how the fact that innovation is cumulative, innovation today depends on innovation yesterday, means it has actually been possible for some agents, including venture capitalists or large shareholders, to enter the innovation game quite late in a particular sector, and yet, if policy is allowing them to, to reap not just you know, their marginal return co corresponding to what they've done in the process, but the entire integral under this cumulative distribution curve. And that's what we think to be one of the sort of one of the forces that has le led to this incredible separation between the income growth of the top 1% and basically the remaining 99%, it's extremely hard to explain that level of inequality through an analysis just of skills.